So, Cloud, it just makes a lot of sense. You've got, uh, you know, waste products that are produced in palm oil production in rubber plantations. And, of course, you're looking to tap into these and uh, turn that into energy. So, broadly, tell us what your plans are. Okay, good evening. Uh, yes, I can tell you that uh, we are now investing in renewable energy also here in Gabon. You have to know that uh, in the oil palm sector, we have an effluent, which is not toxic, but it's, it's highly uh, organic and organic matter. We can easily digest it into methane gas and that gas, uh, we are going to capture it and we're going to burn it into a genset. That genset will create energy for about 6,000 households here in Gabon. Mm -hmm. The second thing that we're going to do is we have to renew our uh, rubber plantations and the old trees, instead of exporting them for the timber industry, we're going to chop them into uh, small pieces and we're going to burn them in a boiler also to generate heat and energy for our factory. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting, um, you know, that you're choosing t to do that when it comes to the rubber plantations as opposed to, as opposed to exporting them to the likes of IKEA in Europe, which are, of course, uh, key buyers of, these, of this rubber and they turn them into, uh, into furniture. Why did you decide to go the, the route where you actually burn them to produce energy as opposed to capitalizing on the demand out there for them? Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, when we did the calculations, because we had the vision of to be uh, green energy, we want to be a renewable energy, we want to be sustainable. When we did the calculations, we found out that it actually was cheaper also to invest in this technology than to, to continue the, the normal way. And uh, this way we actually reduce the production cost and we can assure ourselves to be competitive on the world market in the coming years. And the, the use of the organic material in the palm oil production uh, is also a positive effect on, on the water um, in, in, the, in the area. Tell us about that and, and kind of the positive knock-on effects that this kind of action has. Well, uh, we are actually the first ones to introduce this technology in Africa. Uh, a lot of companies in Malaysia and Indonesia have already adopted this technology. But we are now showing it's also possible in Africa and we are leaders in our domain and we want to show that this technology can be easily adapted to the African conditions and we are sure that we are number one now but a lot of people will follow and this will be good for the global uh, uh, economy and the global uh, environmental issues that we have presently. I mean just taking organic material and creating biogas uh, obviously requires investment in that technology which you say is new to the African continent. Tell us about how much it actually costs and what, what, it, what it entails to set up this in, in your production sites. Well, uh, this gas that we're going to produce is currently just going freely in the atmosphere. So we are capturing it in a, a lagoon system and we're going to keep that storage and then as soon as the genset needs its gas, we will send it to the uh, electrical uh, get genset. So this is the way how it will work. Yeah. It's an uh, anaerobic uh, digestion system, which will then gradually uh, produce the gas to send it to the gensets. You're looking at, a, at an investment here overall of $10 million. Tell us about the return of investment, because I mean, three years is quite a short period to realize the return on the investment. Why such a short period? Well, it, it, you know, the higher the barrel goes, the quicker it pays back for us because we are changing uh, conventional uh, fuels into renewable fuels. Uh, in our business plan, it's the, the, the return on investment is three years. But as soon as the barrel price will go up, we, will can, we can get it back in two years. But even three years is already fantastic. We can be um, producing in a sustainable way without having to rely on, a, uh, on fuel sources. So that's a very good thing. But, I mean, are you already doing this right now? Are you kind of, is this just forecast in terms of uh, the, the rewards that you will get from, in, from investing in these renewable energy initiatives? Uh, well, uh, I think you're talking about the uh, listing on the IPO. No, is no, that it? I was, well, I was, that was going to be my next question, Kat. But let's stay with the, the question around renewable energy. Have you already implemented these initiatives or are you still going to do that? No. This, this investment program was a two-year program and uh, the program started early 2012. We are now actually starting uh, receiving all the equipments and we are installing them. So by 2013, all this will be working and uh, our production costs will 
reduced because of that and we will be a more greener, a more uh, sustainable company. So we are halfway and uh, we can actually uh, say that we are uh, on, the, on, on the way forward to uh, being a, a very sustainable business here in Gabon. And of course on the road so prior to that listing I'm sure that would be one of the key, uh, key things that you'd sell the company on being a renewable energy player. But tell us about uh, the listing and why it has in fact been delayed. Well, uh, you know, we, we, we have uh, we've brought our document, our, our, our document to the COSIMAF, which is the regulator for the IPO. Uh, they are analyzing it. It has taken some delays because it's the first time that something like this happens in the CIMAC zone. So uh, they want to do the right thing and uh, we also have to do the right thing. So it's delaying a little bit, but we're still ongoing. We're still number one to go on the stock exchange here in uh, Gabon. And uh, I think by next week we will have the go ahead and early January we will go on the stock exchange here in Gabon. And it makes sense to list on this stock exchange as opposed to any other stock exchange. Why this one? Why this one? Because we are based here in Gabon and uh, the people know us here. We want to have a lot of Gabonese shareholders because mm -hmm. we want to stabilize the company. We want to be transparent and that's why we are going listed here as the first public company in Gabon, but we have confidence that this will be a great success. Of course, it makes a lot of sense to list in, in the home territory, um, but let's talk about the overall uh, environment, uh, the rubber environment uh, globally, and then let's talk about palm oil. What is your uh, forecast for, for the rubber sector going into 2013? Well, uh, as you know, we are in a time of uh, economic boost, so it's difficult to predict things but we are in a, in a time of also to make our budget and we think that the rubber price will stay a little bit around the same price as it is now. Uh, Europe will not be a, a great uh, investment opportunity next year. So I think only China and America will be a market that will buy a lot of rubber. So we think the price will be about the same around $3,000, $3,200 a ton. And demand for palm oil going into next year? Demand for palm oil, I am sure it will go up, you know, uh, there is, uh, uh, people need palm oil to survive, it's the cheapest vegetable oil, uh, world economies are growing, uh, people need to eat, need, people need to wash themselves, so soap and palm oil products will be available in the markets and I think demand for palm oil will continue to rise. So I think the market is now on one of its lowest and it will still go up. Are there, is there a value chain that, in terms of beneficiation or producing these products that uh, palm oil is used for being developed in Gabon at all? No, we are uh, having a, a, a good market here in Gabon with our palm products. If you have to know that the market is small and uh, uh, it's a difficult market because you can uh, have a lot of competition with import and import is always cheaper because we are just starting here uh, for the palm oil sector. So the advantage of uh, investing in Gabon is that there is a lot of land, there is a lot of uh, opportunities while in other parts of the world these opportunities are finished. So there is a lot of land and investment opportunities are here in Gabon. It just we have to uh, fine tune a little bit the problems with the uh, labor and the problems with uh, some other uh, import issues. And once these problems are solved, Gabon could be a heaven for oil palm.